In the 1920s, two physicists proposed something radical, that electromagnetism and gravity, two of nature's most fundamental forces, could be unified, not through new particles, but by reshaping the fabric of space itself. Their solution? Add a hidden fifth dimension, so small we'd never see it. But within that tiny loop of space, they uncovered a mathematical bridge between Einstein's theory of gravity and Maxwell's equations of electromagnetism. And remarkably, it worked. At least on paper. When the equations were projected back into four dimensions, both forces emerged from the same geometric framework. But over time, the theory faded, eclipsed by the rise of quantum mechanics, the development of the standard model, and eventually the bold promises of string theory. In order to understand Kaluza Klein theory, we need to go back to the early 20th century. Einstein had just published his general theory of relativity, showing that gravity isn't really a force. It's the curvature of space-time caused by mass and energy. Meanwhile, James Clerk Maxwell's equations had already unified electricity and magnetism into a single electromagnetic field. But there was a problem. These two theories didn't fit together. Gravity was geometric, describing how mass bends space-time. Electromagnetism, on the other hand, was described through fields and forces acting within that space. In 1919, a German mathematician named Theodor Kaluza had an idea. What if the universe wasn't four-dimensional, but five? He extended Einstein's field equations into five dimensions, adding an extra spatial dimension to the usual three dimensions of space and one of time. And something remarkable happened. When he mathematically sliced the five-dimensional equations back down to four, he didn't just recover general relativity. He also found the equations that resembled Maxwell's laws of electromagnetism. It was as if the electromagnetic field had been quietly folded into the geometry of space-time, hidden in that extra dimension all along. A few years later, in 1926, Swedish physicist Oskar Klein added a quantum interpretation. He proposed that this fifth dimension wasn't extended like the others, but compactified, curled up into a tiny circle at every point in space, too small to detect. While Klein didn't calculate a precise size, modern physics suggests it might be close to the Planck length, about 10 to the negative 33 centimeters, far beyond the reach of current instruments. Together, Kaluza and Klein had outlined a bold new idea, that gravity and electromagnetism could be unified through geometry alone, simply by adding a single extra dimension to our view of the universe. It was elegant, ambitious, and for a moment in physics, it seemed like the start of something big. But that excitement didn't last. As physics progressed, new forces were discovered, the strong and weak nuclear interactions. Kaluza Klein theory in its original form couldn't account for them. It was built for a universe of gravity and light but not the full complexity of particles and interactions that experiments began to reveal. At the same time, a revolution was unfolding. Quantum mechanics was reshaping our understanding of matter, showing that particles behaved in ways that were governed by chance and uncertainty, not smooth, continuous geometry. General relativity couldn't capture that behavior, and Kaluza Klein theory didn't offer a way to bridge the gap. Then came the standard model, a powerful quantum framework that unified electromagnetism with the weak nuclear force and mapped out the known particles and interactions with stunning accuracy. Compared to this success, Kaluza Klein theory began to seem outdated. 
it didn't match the quantum world, and it couldn't explain particle masses or nuclear forces. Even the idea of an extra dimension drew skepticism. Klein had argued the fifth dimension was too small to observe, but without testable predictions, the theory became harder to defend. It wasn't wrong, it just wasn't useful. By the 1970s, most physicists had moved on to newer models, especially string theory, which also invoked extra dimensions, but expanded the idea dramatically, requiring 10 or 11 dimensions, and introducing entirely new ingredients, like vibrating strings, brains, and supersymmetry. Still, the core insight of Kaluza and Klein, the idea that extra dimensions could encode physical forces, never disappeared entirely. It quietly influenced string theory, supergravity, and modern unified field theories. The original five-dimensional model may have faded, but its legacy lived on in the deeper fabric of theoretical physics. It wasn't a dead end. It was the first step on a longer path. Nearly a century after it was first proposed, Kaluza Klein theory is making a quiet return. In 2024, a team of researchers published a paper in Annals of Physics that re-examines the theory from the ground up. The title of the paper is On a New Perspective to Kaluza Klein Theories. Their premise is simple but bold. Kaluza Klein theory didn't fall short because of its extra dimension. It fell short because we made the wrong assumptions about how to apply general relativity and gauge theory in higher dimensional spaces. When those assumptions are updated, something remarkable begins to unfold. A new geometric framework takes shape, one that not only unifies gravity and electromagnetism, but also includes the Higgs mechanism, which is essential for explaining how particles acquire mass in the standard model. In this reformulated version, key components of the standard model begin to emerge naturally from the geometry of higher dimensional space. Instead of introducing forces by hand in a quantum field theory, they emerge naturally from the curvature of higher dimensional space. It's as if the properties of particles and fields are written into the shape of the universe. But this time, the model doesn't stop at five dimensions. The authors extend it to 16, 12 spatial and four time-like dimensions, mathematically speaking. While only one dimension corresponds to physical time, the use of a broader signature allows for a richer and more flexible geometric structure. And the payoff? This extended framework may solve several of the problems that plagued earlier Kaluza Klein models, like the incorrect predictions of particle masses and the mismatch with observed cosmological constants. It's still theoretical, but it's precise, well structured, and grounded in good mathematics. And suddenly, that old five dimensional idea from the 1920s doesn't look like a discarded relic. It looks like the first line of a much more ambitious theory. The revival of Kaluza Klein theory isn't limited to particle physics. In recent years, it's found surprising applications across cosmology, astrophysics, and gravitational modeling. In 2023, a study published in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society explored how a Kaluza Klein framework could be applied to compact stars dense stellar remnants like neutron stars. By modifying Einstein's equations to include a compact fifth dimension, the researchers uncovered new relationships between a star's mass and its radius, helping to refine models of how these extreme objects behave under intense gravitational pressure. It offered new insights into how matter might behave at nuclear densities where our standard equations start to blur. And that's just one avenue. Back in 2017, another team proposed a far more ambitious mathematical structure, modeling space-time as a multi-fiber bundle. 
In this picture, each point in space-time can contain several overlapping geometric structures, not just one. This framework extends the original Kaluza-Klein idea to a much richer topology, capable in theory of describing multiple fields and interactions within a unified geometry. Even if these frameworks are still in their infancy, the direction is clear. Kaluza-Klein geometry is no longer just a historical curiosity. It's evolving, quietly informing the models we use to study everything from the interiors of stars to the fabric of the cosmos. And all of it stems from a single idea, that the shape of space itself might encode the forces of nature. It's worth noting that while both Kaluza-Klein theory and string theory involve extra dimensions, they approach them very differently. String theory relies on additional dimensions to support the vibrations of tiny one-dimensional strings, often requiring supersymmetry, brains, and other unverified elements. These extra dimensions are tightly constrained by the theory's internal consistency. Kaluza-Klein models, on the other hand, use extra dimensions in a more geometric and minimalistic way. Instead of invoking new particles or symmetries, they extend the structure of space-time itself, embedding physical fields directly into its shape. For a long time, Kaluza-Klein theory was seen as a beautiful failure, a clever idea that couldn't quite capture the full complexity of nature. But sometimes the first draft of a theory isn't wrong, it's just ahead of its time. Now with sharper mathematics and a deeper understanding of geometry, physicists are returning to its foundations and finding something profound. That space itself may not just curve, it may encode the very forces and particles that shape the universe. In this new light, gravity, electromagnetism, and even the Higgs field might be different facets of the same underlying structure. A geometry not of four dimensions, but perhaps 16. And perhaps like me, you're thinking, this sounds unbelievable. The math does say otherwise. These aren't fantasies. They're possible architectures of reality. Hidden, silent, but perhaps very real. From the dense interiors of collapsed stars to the delicate mechanism that gives particles their mass, the spirit of Kaluza and Klein still echoes, reminding us that the universe might be more unified and more elegant than we ever imagined. Would the geometry of space be a carrier not just for energy, but pattern and experience? Whether this path leads us to a full unification of nature's forces or simply a deeper insight into the fabric of space-time, one thing is becoming clear. Some ideas are too bold to stay buried forever. On a personal note, I came across this theory as I was reading Rupert Sheldrake's Morphic Resonance, The Nature of Formative Causation, as I'm beginning to do research for some videos on this topic in the near future. Ultimately, this could possibly answer whether or not the geometry of space could be a carrier not just for energy, but pattern and experience. If you've enjoyed this, I really hope you're subscribed. Be sure to hit the thumbs up. And to me, most importantly, hit that notification bell. So that way, in a year's time, you're not like, she was still making videos all of this time. I want you to be there when a video is released so we can all talk about it. And I can get your feedback because I truly appreciate it. Thanks for joining me on this journey back to a theory nearly forgotten and forward into the mystery of what might still lie beneath the fabric of reality. Till next time, take care.